I need a belt sander. Mm. Howdy folks, welcome to my mess. I went yard sale hopping. I usually look at tools when I go yard sale hopping. Yeah, I do. <laughs> this was an estate sale and they were trying to clear everything out of there. And he had some different things there that were interesting, but really nothing I would buy. And then I came up on this thing and it was laying in a corner and the cable was, the power cable was cut off. And also it was sort of kicked into a corner and the guy says, well, I think the bearings are gone because it's rattly, you know, when you uh, spin it by hand. This is a bell sander, Craftsman bell sander. So it's actually a really nice machine. And it's a real shame that this thing got, you know, waylaid this badly. Uh, what happened was he decided he needed the cord for something else. This wasn't working anymore for him. It wouldn't start. And uh, when he hit the switch, I guess the motor must have at least hummed. I don't know if he noticed that or not, but uh, if the motor hums, it's like, no, you got another problem. So uh, I knew right away when I got home, it was like, yeah, I'll take it apart and I'll have to pull a motor. But I think what we're looking at is a bad capacitor, which this is what a bad uh, capacitor looks like when all the electrolyte and all the garbage in them is basically just about exploded in there. So yeah, the start capacitor was gone. And a lot of times when you do that, if you can find a little stronger capacitor to replace it with, sometimes you'll that'll even help to prevent this from happening again in the future with your motor. I'm not even sure what caused that because the capacitors uh, should have a very long life to them. Uh, hard to say, you know, they do. It does happen though. The other problem he had was, like I said, was the bearing. And uh, once I got this off and took a look at it, this is what the problem was. The screw here was loose and it had spun on the shaft for the, you know, the disc part of this machine. So it was indicating or giving the feeling like the bearings were gone, but it was just, this, this thing had just simply come loose. So it was just a matter of, you know, tightening it up. But I took everything apart, took this off because I had to, I went ahead and just pulled the motor because obviously, you know, there was a problem. Uh, I'm going to put a new cable on. I've got a new capacitor coming and we'll put this back together and we'll take a look at it. But uh, I guess the kicker this morning was because it was an estate sale type thing and they're trying to clear everything out, the guy says, oh, do you want that? Uh, put it in your car. Get it out of here. You know, yeah. So free. <laughs> yeah, free. I like free. <laughs> and, you know, free is aggravating sometimes because it was like, yeah, I have to take a chance, I guess, that I'm going to waste my time on this thing and try to fix what what's wrong. But... As it turned out, it was an easy repair, uh, relatively easy repair. And once they get her back together, she'll be a nice belt sander. Uh, and she's got all the little accessories, I guess, with her too. I think I think everything's uh, here. Nothing's missing, I don't think. So, wow, you know, <laughs> good deal. <laughs> Welcome to my mess. I'm going to show you something else I got at a yard sale. And I bought this for like a dollar, but... You need to kind of look for them. If you're into woodworking, one of the biggest problems I've got is storing sandpaper. I, I've had nothing but problems with flat, nice sheets of sandpaper because they don't fit in the drawers and they end up getting all messed up on everything. So this is a little bit more uh, heavy duty than what I was looking for. But, you know, these are the old office paperwork for, you know, spreadsheets and bad letters and whatever. Uh, but if you see them in a yard sale for like a buck or something, they make an awesome item which you can just put your all your sheets of sandpaper. You can even separate your sheets by the different grits, you know, grit numbers and stuff. And you can have a great place for sandpaper. And, you know, you would probably pick this thing up for a buck because nobody wants them anymore. So when we come back, I will be installing the capacitor back on the motor, put the motor back in, and uh, we'll see if we can get this monkey working. Well, it's almost uh, 24 hours later. Uh, Amazon delivered the new capacitor. I'm gonna tell you a little dark secret about capacitors. The one that was in here was a 25 microfarad, which is a pretty small capacitor for a start winding. Uh, there's two things in here, start winding and a run winding. There's also a centrifugal switch that slaps from start to run. Wow, that was loud. And so what I've done here is, uh, being the bad boy I am, I'm putting a 100 microfarad capacitor in here for a start. That means this thing's going to get a good kick when it starts. I'm not that worried about burning up a start winding or something because you probably won't. It, it's, you know, there's uh, different arguments in the uh, world about it. 
And I measured this physically to see what I could fit in here. That was the other problem I had to really watch. A lot of the uh, small capacitors were just way too big and you know, I'm not gonna fit this application. Found this one on Amazon for about $9 or something. So we're gonna put her in the, uh, yeah, put her in the hole. I've got her connected and all set up. You don't have to worry about polarity. This is one of the few times in your life you won't have to worry about polarity on a capacitor. <laughs> it's just hook it up, you know. There's, there's two wires, two poles, you know, just, just go at it. So we're gonna close this up, get the motor mounted back in the uh, in the machine here. Whoops. Now I gotta get this mounted back in here. So this ought to be interesting. I'm uh, trying to figure out how we can film this while I put this together. I almost need the camera over top of me or something here because uh, we got quite a bit of assembly involved. I had to pull, seemed like I had to pull an awful lot of parts out of here to get this thing out of there. But, yeah. Okay, so let's see if that's gonna work. Yeah, that should work nicely. Okay, you can see the machine a little better now. Uh, motor's back in and uh, hung for the time being. Next thing we gotta do is address this problem here. Come on, come on. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There we go. We got it right. So now you can open this up and get this off of a cable. Take the cable out of there. Okay. <clears throat> now it's not a very long one, but here's the new one. This is not how to do it, but uh, I just put some straight uh, connectors straight through. Uh, they're probably okay for this. Normally on a heavy piece of equipment, I wouldn't do it. Now, uh, I'm gonna turn this around. So you can see the side, put the tape up and the connectors and whatever. And we'll finish the assembly, and plug it in and uh, we'll test it. All right, so we've got the cable coming in properly at the back. A little bit of a hang here thing going on. And let's see, there's our original cover. Yeah. Good. Use the left-handed uh, metric adjustable wrench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there we go. Ah, just, just get that out of the way. And, okay, that looks like that's working pretty good. This is, this is set good. So, now, this is where things get kind of stupid, but it's just the way they did things. Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how the uh, engineers came up with this, but eh, whatever. So this is the spot where things got kind of crazy. This is what got loose and made it feel like it's uh, actually, while I've got it off, I guess we'll go ahead and just sticky some, some sandpaper to it. It'd be a lot easier to throw it on there now. Oh look, made in Canada. <laughs> Amazing. I always wonder where that stuff came from. We had to come through the hole, the slot up here, back into the keyway, get this up. There's no flat spot on the shaft, or is there? Yeah, there is. So we want that pointed, the flat spot, all the way up, because that's what the key is going to lock to. And now, I'm going to do an old trick here and just kind of put a wrench on it and just really, you know, tight kind of thing. So it's, yeah, beautiful. And we'll get our dust collector thingy back on. Whenever you're doing this too, if you're using something like what I'm using, be careful not to over, over hit the trigger because you will strip these, you know, it's all plastic and whatever. You just strip the screws out in a heartbeat. So now the last piece of the resistance here is this little gadget, which was up here, which would be like that. And again, we'll just sort of lock it in place. And Remember, free is good. <laughs> there we go. And that's tight. So it so happens I have a 36 inch uh, machine here already with me, but let's see if we can't fit this on. That should be back, right? Okay, no it wasn't. <laughs> okay, it wasn't. 
Oh, we gotta get the arrow on here. Yeah, okay, it is right. All right. <laughs> Always check the arrow on the sandpaper to make sure it's gonna be traveling the right way. Now, the next thing we're gonna have to do is probably adjust this a little bit to make sure the sandpaper stays in the center. But, uh, oh boy, yeah. Let's plug it in and uh, see what we have. Okay, plugged it in, power's on. Boom! All right, let's see. I put the sandpaper on backwards. Yeah, I did that on purpose to show you guys. <laughs> okay, that's the way the arrow goes. Okay, so the sandpaper goes on this way. All right, so now we'll put her back on. Okay, so we have a free tool that now works. Yeah, still needs to be cleaned up a lot since it came here. But uh, we also have a nice fence on this one. The Delta I have is missing, was missing this, and we put one on at a, an episode way back. Does the trick. I don't use these very often, but uh, when it comes to sanding, it makes sand life a lot easier. So, a freebie from a yard sale or a state sale in this case uh, for nine dollars for a capacitor and throw another cord on it. I'd say we did pretty darn good. Well, she's a little bit cleaned up now. Not really good. But I was going to do a real good clean on her before I showed you again, but here it is. It's it's been cleaned up a bit and uh, works great. And I just, I'm just so happy to have only $9 involved in a nice belt sander when I want to use one. And that's sort of the message today was to get out there and look at those yard sales and don't necessarily be scared of something if you think you can rebuild it. Because in this case, this was well worth my while to take the time and take it apart, clean it, fix it, put it back together. And it's like, you know, yeah. We got a nice good old fashioned Craftsman belt sander. This is the 36 by uh, four inch belt with the uh, six inch uh, disc on it. So, you know, they're a nice machine. Uh, they were a good machine in their day. Uh, meantime, I gotta thank everyone for watching Coffee and Tools. And please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. And uh, man, I gotta put this away. Uh, they are heavy. Ugh, you know, I'm out of here. <laughs> Over and out. <laughs>